Hey everybody, welcome to day six of Vlognica, and yes, I'm wearing my wedding dress, so let's address the dress first. This video is all about my best and worst purchases of 2020, and my wedding dress is my best purchase. So I had to get it out of its bag to show you for this video, and I thought, well, whilst it's out, I might as well put it on. The only issue, is that I can't actually fully get myself into this dress, i.e. do up all the buttons on the back by myself, but I did manage to do up the top button so it could at least like fully form around my body. But now I'm really worried that I'm not gonna be able to get it back off. So if I can't do that, I will just have to sit in my wedding dress all day until Dan gets home and can help me out of it. But yes, I wanna do a video all about my best and worst purchases that I made this year. I love these kinds of videos. You know I love talking about money and spending habits and maybe if we look back on the purchases that we've made this year, maybe we can learn something about ourselves. Maybe we can learn from some of those mistakes that we made, but also become more aware of, ah, oh, that really like brought me joy. And I just love watching these kinds of videos as well. I love seeing people being like, I regret this purchase but also like this one was worth it like i said this dress is my best purchase of 2020 hands down it is the most expensive item on my list it comes in at around 1400 pounds it is a lot but if you want to hear more about the dress and how i got it custom made then i did a whole video about the dress. So you can find out all about the money and the details of the dress in that video. I actually have more items on my best purchases list than worst, which I'm just gonna give myself a pound back for. Like, well done, making some good decisions this year. But I'm actually gonna start with my worst purchases and then we'll move on to the rest of the best purchases. My first worst purchase is this teleprompter slash auto cue thing. Ah, uh, so frustrating. Basically, I was doing a few more videos that required scripts and having like my script on my lap and just like looking down and trying to like remember it sentence by sentence to deliver it to the camera is really difficult. And I was like, maybe if I get an auto cue, I'll be able to like deliver the lines seamlessly, naturally, and also remember because I'm reading what I wrote. And so I bought an auto cue and it costs 160 pounds, but I have never used it. And that's because I just couldn't get the whole setup working properly. I got the auto cue working, but it was just like how it all fit together with the rest of the process and how I sit down and make videos. So it works with an iPad. I have an iPad. And so you put that in with the script and then it shows up. That was all working fine. However, the auto cue, the body of it covered up my viewfinder. So I wouldn't be able to see if the camera was still recording, if it had like cut off, if my memory card was full, like if I was in the frame and like showing something properly. So I was like, great, I don't have my viewfinder anymore. And also I film all these videos by myself. I don't have somebody behind the camera who can like watch it and keep check for me. So I downloaded an app on my phone to be like a second monitor for the camera. So I was like, okay, good. I've got this on my phone. I can see what's going on. But then I realized I often need my phone in videos. I often need it to read Instagram questions or like I've taken screenshots of stuff that I need to reference. So I often need my phone like to be able to use as a phone in videos. And then I realized I also often need to use my iPad as an iPad in videos because I sometimes screen record what I'm doing on the iPad in the video. And so it just all crumbled from there. And I was just like, I just don't think I'm gonna find a way to like fully make this work with the setup that I have without like building a bigger studio for one. Cause when I put the auto cue on the camera, I had to kind of like change the positioning of where I sit and where the camera goes. And there's not a huge amount of space in this corner. And then I would also have to get extra monitors and like figure all that stuff out. And I just couldn't be bothered, could not be bothered. And I did kind of find a solution to the script 
problem, which we will come on to later. But yeah, this has never been used. I didn't return it in time, so now I just have this auto cue. My next worst purchase is some refresher driving lessons because after our wedding, Dan and I traveled around the country for our honeymoon, but also we visited some of our grandparents who we couldn't have at the wedding. And we were driving around the country and Dan was like, I'll do it if you do some of the driving. And so I immediately booked myself on some refresher lessons because I do have a license, I just haven't driven in 10 years and I am not confident at all. All. So I paid 200 pounds and did my lessons and it was all fine. I like remembered how to drive and change gears. Still not confident, but I was like, I can drive. <laughs> I can remember how to drive. I've still never gone above 40 miles an hour and I've never been on a motorway though. So when it came to the day when I had to drive, we were in Scotland and we we're gonna be driving to Yorkshire and I did a little test run of Dan's car because I'd never driven it before around the little village that we were staying in. And that was like, okay. I'd never like driven before with Dan as my passenger. <laughs> it was fine. Just went around the village a bit, got out of the car, burst into tears. Full meltdown panic. And I just was freaking out about it. And then I got back in the car and I was testing, feeling the biting point so I could get used to the biting point. Sat behind the wheel, I was like, I'm fine. Okay, yeah, I got this. I can feel the biting point in this car. Got out of the car, burst into tears again. So Dan did all of the driving. Thank you, Dan. I did one drive that was about 10, 15 minutes between Dan's mum's house and his granny's house, but that was it. And I actually wrote about this in my newsletter and loads of you replied with really encouraging words and some tips about how to kind of like slowly get back into driving and building confidence. And I was like, yeah, I'm totally gonna do this. And then we got back from that trip and the car is just on the road and done no driving. So that 200 pounds was well spent. Maybe in another 10 years time, I'll spend another 200 pounds on some refresher lessons. And who knows, who knows when I'll actually feel like a driver. The next one is the cheapest one, but it is so frustrating to me. And that can happen where it's not necessarily about the price tag that makes it a best purchase or a worst purchase, but like other factors involved. This thing was only eight pounds and yet I honestly I regret it to my core. I regret it more than the driving lessons. I can maybe try and find a positive spin to the driving lessons thing but this there is no positive spin and it is some oven gloves. Wasn't that anticlimactic? Basically our old oven gloves just got completely wrecked and ruined, needed some new ones, bought these online, didn't think that they were two separate mittens, the picture looked like it was like all one thing so had to add a string to it so we could actually hook it around our oven door but my main issue with these is that they are too thin if i grab a hot dish out of the oven you want to be able to grab you want to be able to hold on to something coming out of the oven burns through it is too thin so i'm mad about that i was honestly livid <laughs> at myself for not like fully checking the product description and making sure i was buying the right oven gloves but also just like at these oven gloves for not being functional. Mad about it. Only eight pounds, I know, but I'm just so mad about it. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? <laughs> oh God, I can't find my next thing. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> so ridiculous. Okay, so my final worst purchase is this epilator. So an epilator removes leg hair, maybe other hair, I don't know. I'd be scared to use it anywhere else other than legs. But it basically works like little tweezers and it's electric and it goes and like pulls out all of your leg hair. So the reason why I got this is because I used to get my legs waxed a lot and I loved it because my hair would grow back really fine and smooth and I would just let my hair grow out and then like when I felt like it, I would just like go get my legs waxed again. Probably like every two to three months or something. But I didn't like how expensive that was. Then after my surgery, I stopped getting my legs waxed because I was just really weak and the idea of like hoisting myself up onto like one of those salon bed things and having someone rip hairs out of my leg which would make me tense and like tensing and everything like really hurt my abdomen. So I was like, right, that's not gonna be a thing that I do anymore. And so I started shaving, which is fine. Like I don't mind shaving, but we can't deny that the legs grow back like faster and like, 
spikier. And my sister is a big fan of epilators. And so I was like, why do you like them? Are they any good? And she loves them. So I thought I will give it a go. This was 83 pounds. So not cheap, not cheap. But in my head, I was like, well, it's an upfront cost. And in the long term, it will be cheaper than waxing and my hairs will grow back smoother. I used this once, one time. And even that one time, it didn't really work properly because my leg hairs were too long. This thing works at a really specific leg hair length. And I like to let my leg hair grow out way longer than that. In order for this to like work for your legs, you would have to use it more regularly. I can never say that word, regularly. You'd have to use it more often than I would like. I actually did end up getting my legs waxed for the first time since surgery for my wedding, which was in early September and I still haven't shaved them or epilated them or gotten them waxed again since. The winter fuzz is really coming in strong and I love it. So I wouldn't even be able to use the epilator on it. Like it wouldn't work because the leg hairs are too long. Like I would probably have to epilate like every three weeks or something. And I'm just not about that life. So not a good purchase for me. Doesn't, doesn't work with my uh, leg hair, hair removal lifestyle preferences. If I was someone who preferred smooth legs all of the time and could be bothered with epilating often. Great purchase, but it just doesn't suit my needs. Right, now we're on to best purchases, things that I'm happy about buying. Obviously, wedding dress, we covered that. My next best purchase is the Nintendo Switch and the Ring Fit Adventure, which is like an exercise game that comes with it. Honestly, this has helped so much through lockdown. In the first lockdown, we were doing like semi-regular um, Mario Kart nights with some of Dan's work friends as well, which was just so fun, so fun. Obviously I got into Animal Crossing, not so much anymore, but it served its purpose when I needed it. All in all with the Switch, the Ring Fit and the extra set of controllers that we bought, it came to around like 430 pounds. And I'm saying this is a best purchase of mine. Technically Dan bought the Switch and I bought the Ring Fit and the extra controllers, but you know, what's mine is yours. Legally, literally, we own the same stuff. <laughs> so yeah, this is definitely up there, worth it. The next one I wanted to talk about is another one that helped me through some of lockdown. However, it's such a good purchase. I wish I'd purchased it earlier and that's my deck chair like my sun lounger remember that heat wave remember that lockdown heat wave and we're all at home and it was so sunny well we're really lucky that we have a balcony so we had like some outdoor space and i bought a deck chair i was like i want to lie down in my bikini on my balcony and read my books and that's what i did for a solid two days before the heat wave left us because I purchased it too late, goddammit. But here's the thing, I do not regret it. I do not regret that purchase just because I bought it too late and couldn't like maximize its usage. I now still have it. So next time summer rolls around, I know I'll probably be out and about a bit more, but I still will have it so I'll be able to use it when I want. The deck chair was a hundred pounds, but I had an Amazon voucher, so I technically, paid nothing for it because I had a gift voucher, but it was worth a hundred pounds. So maybe that's why it also feels really good because I'm just like, it was a gift voucher, yay. <laughs> it has this thing over the top as well. So you can put it over your face. So the sun isn't like shining directly into your eyes, which I love, I love that touch. And when it's folded up, it fits perfectly under our sofa. It's like it was built for that sofa. And so that was just like the cherry on top that it had a perfect storage place in our home. So I mentioned about finding a sort of solution to my video scripts and being able to like remember what I'm saying. And that came in a like bundle thing that I bought. So the main thing that I was currently looking for was an overhead tripod. And I was actually watching like loads of YouTube videos of like the best setups for like filming directly overhead. And I knew that I wanted to be able to film overhead on my kitchen table. And I've done that for like a couple of videos, like the situationships letters video, and then the like 
flowers video and then the cupcakes video. So there's been like a few times that I've used it. Granted, I've not always used it very well. I'm still getting to grips with it. Like sometimes just the weight of it, I've not like positioned it properly and it's like the camera's like all falling down. So my usage of it is definitely not perfect yet, but I'm still really enjoying having the option to use it and like, trying to get better every time. I honestly think actually the first time I used it was the best setup that I managed to create, but we'll get there. This is it. So it has this really great weighted thing on the bottom. So that goes on my kitchen table. And then this is the arm. And each one of these things is um, adjustable. And then my camera, I use my little Sony camera. Oh, did I buy that this year? <gasps> new best, another best purchase to add on to the list. Let me grab it. Sony came out with this new camera called the ZV-1 and it's like specifically designed for vloggers. Um, and I had the old Sony RX100 Mark III, but the microphone on that just wasn't great. I did not like the internal microphone on it at all. But this one is so much better and I just love it. And I've been filming a lot more like days in the life and like little bits and bobs. And yeah, this is what I use for that. And this is light enough to stick on the end of this. So that's what I use. But basically when I was searching for this, I couldn't find this on Amazon. I couldn't find it like anywhere online except for this cake decorating website. I know, it basically came in this like creator bundle. So it's designed for if you are making content about baking and so you can like film what you're doing. But this is like literally, that was the only website where I could find this thing, but it came in a bundle. The bundle was 135 pounds and it included this tripod. It came with this like phone selfie light which I haven't used a whole bunch, but when I have, I like really enjoy it. And I just love that I have it as like an option. So it um, has a white light and then it has a mixed light and then it has a yellow light as well. And then the final thing that the bundle came with, I can't show you because it is on my tripod currently, is this like iPad stand. It's a clamp, you put it on your tripod and then I can sit my iPad on my tripod. So my notes for what I'm talking about, my notes about every single thing and the price that it is, it's just like, it's just there. Previously, I would sit with my iPad and my notes for the video on my lap, but now it's right there. And honestly, it has made filming so much easier. I feel like I can switch between each point much faster when I'm filming rather than being like, okay, what's the next thing? Right, boom. Whereas I'm just like, doo -doo, doo -doo. there it is. I forgot to say how much the Sony camera cost and it is 600 pounds. One more quick technical thing that was a best purchase and this one only cost me 10 pounds and it is a selfie stick. No, it's not for the purpose of it being a selfie stick, but basically I was looking for a phone tripod that wouldn't just do landscape, but da 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 it can do portrait. And I basically wanted this for any time I was doing like an IG live with someone, but also any time I'm FaceTiming a friend and I can't be bothered like holding up the camera with my hand, you know? So I just kind of go, bloop, ta-da, there we go, hello pal. It was a tenor, it's very flimsy, but it serves its function. But it has this other thing that I didn't know that it had, that I was like, this makes it even better. It comes with this like Bluetooth remote control. And I know that you can just like buy Bluetooth remote controls, but I bought this because I wanted something to be able to like vertically hold my phone. And then it also had a remote control. And so that has been really handy for like taking pictures for Instagram and just like doing bits and bobs of content creation with my phone. So tenor and it has proved its worth. We love it. All right, if you're not interested in tech stuff, you'll be happy to know that is the end of the tech stuff. If you're into interior design, you're in luck. The next best purchase is some legs we got from Ikea for our Calyx unit. I was just feeling uninspired by our living space, you know, being like trapped in there for months and just like spending more time than I'm used to at home. I was just like, I'm just not, feeling inspired. And we have this Calyx unit underneath our TV and it usually sits on the floor. And I was like, do you know what? I think it needs some legs. Um, so we got some legs for it. And also I did a big clear out of all of the board games at the same time. So kind of like tidied up 
that section in general and oh honestly I'm vibing with it I love it I love now like hanging out in my living room lighting some candles on the calyx unit watching something on the TV oh I just I love staring at it it's great and they cost like 20 quid or something I don't know cheap the joy that those legs have provided for me very much exceeds how much they cost so that is why they are one of the best purchases I've made this year <laughs> this next one I actually originally put on my worst purchases list because I was mad about it but then it moved onto my best purchases list I know controversial what changed well it is the resin supplies the art supplies that I bought so I've got these like resin coaster molds and then also like the resin itself. I don't really wanna get it out of the box cause uh, I'm wearing my wedding dress. So if you watch the video of me trying to do some arts and crafts with my wedding flowers, I attempted to make uh, a resin coaster. And this is what I created and it was shit. It wasn't like the right size. There wasn't enough resin. Bits of the flowers are like coming out. I mean, I use this. It's like a coaster for one of our candles, but it's laughable. I think I spent around 50 pounds on all of the different supplies and I was ready to put it on the worst purchases list because I was like, what a waste of money. Like, this is shit. I'm never gonna do this again. But then I did do it again and I actually really enjoyed the process and I'm planning on making some more. So just for that reason, I was just like, you know what? This is good, I enjoy it. The next two that I made are better in terms of their shape, like they're actually full and I did the right amount of resin, but there's way more air bubbles in these, like a lot more air bubbles. And I don't know whether that was because I just wasn't as patient with these two as I was with like the original one where I was taking like loads of time and being really careful. And with these, I was just like, blah, 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 it doesn't matter. This one came out really well. You can see that it's a flower. Look at that, it's a flower. And then I used some of the other like petals that I cut off to kind of like sprinkle. This one was meant to be a love heart, but then when I like added the extra resin, it just all moved apart. So my next strategy is to put in half of the resin, put in my pattern, let it set, like half set, like a little bit set. And so then when I put in my second load of resin, nothing moves. I don't know if this is a good plan. We'll, we'll find out. I also remembered that I've got lots of glitter. And so I'm like, I could make some like glittery resin coasters but basically the plan is to try and make some half decent ones to give to family for christmas and they better appreciate it because it's homemade baby i mean they are pretty shit and also it's still really bumpy here like it's all kind of like come through out the top but i'm hoping that that won't happen if i use my new technique but yeah that's why it's made it into best purchases because i've actually been really enjoying doing the, like the crafting of it and i'm like ooh. Like, but if I try this, will I improve? The only thing that still frustrates me is the air bubbles. And I'm like, do I need to buy a heat gun? Like, do I just need to buy the bullet and purchase another thing? Like, especially if I'm gonna be doing more of this and I might actually need to get some more resin and gloves and sticks and pots. Oh boy. All right, well, those are some of my best and worst purchases of 2020. If you care to share, please let me know what yours are in the comments and we can all try and encourage each other to make better spending decisions in 2021. Sometimes you don't know though. Sometimes you don't know that something is gonna be a disaster until you buy it and try it, like the epilator, like nothing I can do now. I didn't know, actually no, I could have done my research and found out that <laughs> It only works on short hairs. So actually, that is, you know, my fault. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for another Vlognica video. Bye. Okay, I'm seeing if I can undo that one button that I did up. So you can see the top one. I do think I'll be able to. Yeah, look. Come on. <gasps> da, 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 da. Hannah's not gonna be stuck in her wedding dress all day. That would be awkward. Good job.